Hello everyone, welcome to the 23rd lecture of the course. In the previous two lectures, we discussed two models of human conduct and that completes our discussion on right understanding. So if you remember, we began with discussing the basic desire of a human being, that is continuity of happiness. And we said, and that, we said that this is ensured by right understanding, right feeling and right thought. Right feeling and right thought together is called as resolution. And then we started discussing about resolution and discussing the resolution, we talked about right understanding in detail, right understanding of the human being, right understanding of the existence, and right understanding of the participation of human being in the existence. In this, With that, we'll go to discuss wisdom in this lecture. So we are discussing module five, that is understanding human conduct, all encompassing resolution, and the holistic way of living. And today we are going to talk about wisdom. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about wisdom now and wisdom essentially means identification of the human goal. So briefly, we had discussed about human goal in the previous course. We'll recapitulate it. And with that, we'll get the clarity about wisdom. So identification of human goal. So identification of human goal, which is in alignment with the existential order. This is to be ensured. This is to be understood. So identification of what to do as a human being and what not to do as a human being. So this is something similar to what we talked about value. So value is there at the level of contemplation. And when it comes to imagination, it is there as wisdom. So once we have the right understanding about the existence and about the human being in it, we can visualize the human goal. Depending upon different angles of perception, this goal can be formulated differently. However, this difference will be only at the level of expression and not in essence. So we have taken one such formulation in VHV2, which we'll discuss here in detail, but we'll also introduce another such formulation which has been taken in Indian tradition for a long time. And this will give us, <clears throat> and this will help us to see the possibility of different formulations and also help to see certain aspects of human goal more clearly. So there was one formulation that was discussed while discussing the harmony in the society and we termed it as human goal. But there is another formulation that has been used traditionally in the history and we'll also take a look at that. So if you look at the human goal that we've discussed so far, now, according to that formulation, so if you look at the self, at the level of self, so the human goal would be to ensure continuity of happiness and that essentially means to ensure bliss satisfaction peace and happiness in the self at the level of society what we basically aspire for is to ensure right understanding right feeling and right thought that ensures happiness in the human being and that is something to be ensured in every individual of the society isn't it so when you're talking about society it is a collection of individuals and we have to set some goals for the individuals. So naturally we would like every human being to be happy. And for that we'd like to have every human being be competent with right understanding, right feeling and right thought. Similarly, at the level of family, we would like to have prosperity in every family. And as we have discussed earlier, prosperity is the feeling of having more than required. So if the families are able to identify the need for physical facility rightly, and they are able to ensure the production or availability of more than what is required, the family feels prosperous. And that is something that you would like to have in every family of the society. Now with these two, we'd like to have fearlessness, that is to say trust in the society. So once there is right understanding and right feeling in the human being, and there's also prosperity in the family, then it is possible to ensure fearlessness in the society. Unless these two are ensured, we can only try to curtail fear, but the fear will continue. There will not be fearlessness in the society. And when the human beings are able to live together, and when the human beings are able to live together in harmony, then we can be sure about ensuring harmony with the rest of nature. So we naturally aspire to have coexistence that is mutual fulfillment mutual enrichment with the rest of nature. So this is something that we desire at the level of society. I hope you are able to see this. See this. We can try to recapitulate what we had discussed earlier in the previous course. 
are you able to see that all these four components are required one thing can we drop anything out of this or if these four are ensured do we need something more than this try to think over it and where to start from do we start from the nature do we start from the human being so we have seen that it is ultimately the human being which due to preconditionings or sensations is not able to make the right kind of living and that's how there is problem in the nature so naturally we have to start from the human being and once the right understanding is ensured in the human being then only prosperity is ensured and then only fearlessness is ensured and when the human beings are able to live together happily with a feeling of prosperity then they naturally take care of the rest of nature also so this is the order that we go about fulfilling so looking at that again so these are the four human goals at the level of society now this is real now this is realized through five dimensions in the society one is education sanskar so you already are a part of the education process so this is one important dimension of society the next dimension is health and sanyam then production and work then justice and preservation and then exchange and storage so we had discussed about all these five dimensions in the previous course i will not detail upon them once again this is not our major focus our major focus is how to develop the wisdom based on right understanding so these are the five dimensions and we need to have clarity about these five dimensions now once we are able to show these five dimensions then the whole society gets orderly from family order to the world family order we start with the family go to the family cluster then village then village cluster and so on moving up to the world family so let's say in a family there are 10 people then the family cluster will have 10 square people and then the village would have 10 cube people and going in this order in 10 steps we can have a world of 10 to the power 10 people isn't it and you can see that with this clarity we can conceive of a whole world as a family we can also see how the whole world can get orderly the whole world can get organized isn't it so explore about it i hope you are able to see the need for all these five dimensions of society isn't it and also you are able to see the 10 steps in which the whole world can be orderly from family order to the world family order now if that is not ensured then what would happen such would be the scenario of the world so like if the people do not have right understanding right feeling then they will be uh, carrying so many assumptions within they will be preconditioned in multiple ways and one now if you are not able to ensure right understanding right feeling and right thought in the individual then what would result would be such gross misunderstanding like having assumptions such as money is everything they struggle for survival only the fittest can survive nobody is trustworthy so many assumptions could be there and if the education is not right then this may be there in every individual now when such assumptions are there then in the family we can see that there is effort for accumulation and that also by any means without ever being clear how much is required so we can see that this is not possible for every individual to accumulate in an unlimited manner so only few individuals should be able to accumulate and that also not be unlimited it will still have a limit but for that they will have to exploit others so what will result in the society is domination exploitation fear isn't it and then to fulfill such desires of accumulation by any means one would have to do mastery over nature exploit the nature and then there would be gross problems in the society and you can see that because of this there would be obsession for assumption and then you can see that because of this there would be obsession for consumption obsession for profit obsession for sensual pleasure so obsession for consumption means that one would like to or one would try to consume as much as possible without ever being clear how much is required so how much food to consume how many houses to consume okay how many vehicles to consume how many gadgets to consume so there would be an obsession and this is something that we can see in the society today isn't it similarly there would be obsession for profit wherever exchange takes place people would try to take the maximum by giving the minimum and then there would be tug of war kind of thing in the exchange so there would be obsession for profit and then there would be obsession for sensual pleasure also and this is something that is quite prevalent today in the society we can see the advertisements 
the entertainment channels which are full of such enticement for sensual pleasure so this is something which is being seen today now because of domination exploitation in the society there is likelihood of terrorism and war and we can see that almost every year some war is there isn't it similarly in the nature we can see that there is resource depletion pollution and you know, such problems are quite prevalent today and people are wondering how much this earth is going to survive now if the situation continues like this so what not to do as a human being so we can see that this is certainly not doable this is certainly not to be accepted in the society so detailing about the human goal we would like to do some detailing about the human goal now and basically this is something as a collective goal at the level of society so how to recognize our real goals and that would mean that in absence of something leads to our unhappiness then we can deduce that this is our real goal otherwise it is not but happiness would mean that it is the state of harmony within isn't it it is not some so human aspiration we want to live so living with physical facility is one part it's not that we just want to live we want to live with fulfillment and that would mean that we want to have the fulfillment in relationship and we also want to ensure required physical facility and it's not that we just want to live with fulfillment we want to live with continuous fulfillment and this has been called by different names such as bliss peace satisfaction happiness fulfillment salvation contentment enlightenment liberation independence self actualization ecstasy divinity but essentially this is well being of all so whatever name you assign to it we essentially want to be in a state in which you would like to continue and that is something which is based on awakening to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization so in the tradition people have used different words you may find still on more may still find so many words in english as well as hindi to denote that situation to to denote that state in which we really want to be so essentially we are aspiring for well being of all and that is possible when there is right understanding in the self that we are able to see the truth so truth essentially is the submergence of nature in existence so truth essentially is submergence of nature in space and the right understanding gets completed with this uh, realization of the submergence then fulfillment in relationship and that would mean having the feeling of love and compassion so love is the feeling when we see ourselves related to each and every human being and with that we naturally get the feeling of compassion that is something that we discussed earlier and then ensuring more than required physical facility which would fulfill the need for prosperity in the self so these three things are required so you can see whether you want to have this or not so we all have been trying to ensure continuity of fulfillment and the generations to come are also going to aspire for the same thing they can give some different names to it but ultimately we are aspiring for a state something like this where we are able to have the right understanding of the self where we are able to have the right understanding in completeness in the self we are able to fulfill the relationship with every human being and we are also able to fulfill the needs of the body rightly isn't it so at the level of individual if you see human being is coexistence of self and body so in the self we want to have right understanding right feeling and right thought in the body we would like to have health then we would like to recognize the need for physical facility rightly and also acquire the competence for right utilization and preservation of mind body and physical facility then we would like to have the ability to live in community with right behavior and right work collaboratively so that we can collaborate with each other and not compete or struggle with each other and mindset of participation in the larger order at least in the family order so we need to have the ability to recognize responsibility in the family system and competence to fulfill that responsibility so try to find out are these our needs or not does our unhappiness or the complaints that we are carrying within all these have to do with the lack of competence in these areas if the absence of the competence makes us unhappy 
it is certainly our need so we need so we need to have this kind of competence in the self so that we can fulfill all these now if you look at the level of family so we'd like to have the ability to recognize the relationship in the family recognizing relationships like father mother son daughter brother sister this is one part similarly we'd like to ensure and fulfill the expected feelings in these relationships so we need to have the right understanding of the feeling in every relationship and we'd like to fulfill them we'd also like to evaluate them so that we are able to see that yes the fulfilling so that we are able to see that yes the relationship has been fulfilled rightly and along with this we'd like to have the mindset and competence for service in hindi we can call it as seva as and when required secondly recognizing the need for physical facility its production right utilization and ensuring the feeling of prosperity in the family also we'd like to have the ability to look after the next generation in body and mind so one important responsibility of the family is to produce the next generation and uh, it's not only that uh, it's limited to production of that it's not that it is limited to procreation but rather we have to give the proper guidance take care of the next generation and you have to take care of the body as well as the self then acceptance of responsibilities that the family is expected to fulfill in the society its fulfillment with the collaboration with the family so the family is a part of society and the family of course has a definite role to play in the society so there are five dimensions that we mentioned and every family has a certain role to play in those five dimensions or in some of those dimensions so maybe some family is participating in the production activity some family is participating in the educational process some is participate some are participating for the health some are participating for ensuring proper exchange so every family is expected to fulfill its participation in the society and this is sustainable only when we have the feeling of collaboration and not competition then preservation of family traditions from generation to generation and this is related to the meaningful family and societal achievements so the family traditions have to be maintained generation after generation isn't it so you'll see that in the society some family has been working on ayurved and the knowledge of ayurved is carried forward after carried forward from one generation to another generation and this is another responsibility of the family to preserve the family traditions from generation to generation and this is related to meaningful family and societal achievements there are some families which have been weaving for generations there are some families which have been practicing ayurved to ensure health there are some families which have been doing some space some specific kind of cultivation and that tradition has to be preserved isn't it so this is also an import <clears throat> so this is also an important part of the responsibility of the family then at the level of society we need to fulfill the relationship with the relatives friends and all those who come in contact even strangers at least we need to have the feeling of trust we need to have this feeling that every human being innately wants to make the other happy so that there is an environment of fearlessness in the society isn't it let's say you are traveling by train and you have a fear that every person in the uh, train would like to make you unhappy would like to make you deprived and then you see what would be your state of the self state of imagination will you feel fearless within you will you feel assured within you or will you feel restless within you so at the level of society we also need to ensure the trust with the strangers okay so that we are able to see very naturally that innately every human being wants to be happy and wants to make the other happy this kind of feeling is not there today and that's why we can see that there is so much of fear and because of fear we have to invest so much in terms of accumulating physical facilities so that we can reduce the fear then fulfillment of collective responsibilities and that would mean the responsibilities that are required for the societal systems to work smoothly and effectively so there are some collective responsibilities in the society for example the cleanliness has to be maintained in the society isn't it if you are living in a village then we have to ensure that the cleanliness is maintained the health is ensured for all okay there is enough greenery there are enough trees 
so there would be some certain collective responsibilities then development of a conducive social environment so that the family can feel assured and be able to participate joyously and the family can live in a self organized manner preserving the family and societal culture so this is another part of the so shall so this is another part of the responsibility so the social environment has to be ensured the next uh, goal would be to develop a humanistic constitution so a nation is a part of society a state which is a part of the nation is also a part of the society so at the level of state or nation also even at the level of district at the level of village we need some constitution to be there in place and collectively we have to make it we have to develop it so this is another important goal at the level of society and then we have to fulfill the relationship of mutual fulfillment between all including various countries so we have to fulfill the international relations in such a way that we are in harmony with our neighbors and we also need to ensure harmony among all the nations uh, because we can see that due to lack of this harmony today there are so many wars being fought and so many calamities are there so many wars are being fought and so much of damage is there isn't it so much of wastage of physical facilities there so much of fear is there so naturally it is an important goal for the society to ensure mutually fulfilling international relations now at the level of nature we need to ensure mutual enrichment with every unit in nature and at the level of individual family village national as well as international levels so we are able to see so many problems arising out of inhuman conduct in the nature today like pollution resource depletion and there are so many kinds of pollution so we have to see how we can enrich the air water soil plants trees isn't it so that is also an important thing to be taken care of and also we have to look into our production processes unless our production processes are cyclic and mutually enriching they are not going to be sustainable and they are not going to be fulfill and they are not going to be fulfilling for the nature also so unless our production processes are cyclic and mutually enriching they are not going to be sustainable so you have to take care of the nature also so try to look into all these four goals whether they appeal to you naturally whether you are able to relate yourself to these goals for example you are going on a job after some time so will you take care of these goals because whenever you are in a job you are participating in the society also so if there is some company which is damaging the nature but paying you a high package would you like to go for that job or not isn't it at the level of society at the level of society do you see that you have a role to play there in terms of ensuring harmony in the society fulfilling all those goals that we discussed right now in your family also would your role be limited only to our physical facilities or to also ensure proper fulfillment of relationship in the family and also fulfill the need for ensuring and also maintain the tradition of knowledge in the family so all those things have to be taken care of so this was one formulation of the human goal there is another formulation here that we'll discuss now so <clears throat> there could be four human goals like this wealth wishes that would be fulfillment of wishes right understanding of natural laws and liberation so this could be another so this could be another way to formulate the human goal and we'll try to understand this now put in right order the first priority would be ensuring right understanding of the natural laws at least ensure the thought of it in every human being then ensure right fully earned wealth then fulfillment of wishes and desires and then effort for liberation so in a sense in accordance with the right understanding of natural laws ensuring right fully earned wealth and fulfillment of wishes ultimately it will lead to making effort for liberation so this is something which has been called as dharma then arth then kaam and then moksha in hindi so this is another way to look at the human goal 
So try to see whether the goals in the society can be put in this manner also. You will be studying these goals more in detail when you study various selective courses in human values. But here we'll have a brief overview of these four goals. So wealth would mean ensure the physical facility that is required. And for that, we'll have to work on the natural resources as well as our mind and body so that the two put together can ensure the production of more than required. So the goal for wealth would mean ensuring the physical facilities which are required. And for that, we have to understand the natural resources. We have to utilize the natural resources. We also have to invest our mind and body so that we are able to produce what is required in terms of physical facility in the right quantity, in the right manner. So when we are able to rightfully acquire wealth, so that would certainly mean that it is in accordance with the understanding of natural laws. Unless we have the understanding of natural laws, whatever we try to do with the nature will not be able to fulfill the nature. Rather, it will deprive or deplete the nature. So the achievements of production, which is in line with the natural laws, so that would mean that the need for physical facility is fulfilled. And the fulfillment of one's physical needs as well as fulfill the physical needs of others. So the achievement of production, which is in line with the physical, that is natural laws, would mean that we are able to ensure the availability of physical facility. And we are able to fulfill one's physical needs as well as fulfillment of the physical needs of others, isn't it? So in the society, we have to ensure that the physical needs of all human beings are fulfilled. Similarly, wishes, that is fulfillment. <clears throat> Similarly, fulfillment of wishes would mean that the fulfillment of wishes along with understanding of natural law plus wealth. So it would be at the level of, so we have to fulfill the need for wealth. Uh, we have to understand oneself. We have to understand the needs of the society where the family is an important ingredient and of the whole humanity and then of the societal order, the whole system. So we have wishes at every level and we need to fulfill these wishes with the right understanding of the natural laws. Unless we have the right understanding of the natural laws and unless we are able to fulfill the need for wealth rightly, we are not able to fulfill these wishes, isn't it? So you'll see that all these goals are related. Now, living with understanding of natural laws would mean that the laws of living in relationship and order are understood and fulfilled. The laws related to the order in society and entire nature are also understood and fulfilled. So living in relationship and order with understanding of natural laws would mean that we are able to understand the existential laws rightly. So understanding relationship and harmony, isn't it? Now existential laws would mean that we are able to also see the submergence of nature in space based on which we are able to see the relation between each and every unit. We are able to see the innate harmony in each and every unit. And once we are able to see this, then we are able to live in accordance. In our once we are able to understand this, then we are able to live in accordance with behavioral and societal laws and also the physical laws. So there will be different laws to obey. And with this right understanding of these existential laws, we are able to understand these laws of behavior and, so and society. We are able to understand the laws of behavior and society, and we are able to live in accordance with that. Now here it is to be noted that these behavioral or societal laws and physical laws are existential in nature. They are not developed in any arbitrary manner by human being. So if you try to make any law by yourself, then it is no longer an existential law. So for example, trust is an existential law. So each human being wants to make every other human being happy. This is something there by the very design of nature. The nature by its very design is mutually fulfilling and not struggling for survival. So this is something which has to be understood. This is something which has to be contemplated upon. Otherwise, when you try to make some laws without understanding these existential laws, then we'll run into problems. So the existence is governed by existential laws. Nature is governed by natural, that is physical, behavioral, or societal laws. And depending on how much of these laws have been understood, these laws may be articulated in words in a specific language in a certain manner by human beings. 
So once we are able to see the existential laws clearly, then we can frame our own laws, isn't it? So when you go to make a constitution, so various uh, laws that you make in the constitution essentially have to be based on the understanding of the natural laws. So if we have to ensure harmony in the society, we have to ensure trust in the society. If you do not pay attention to the feeling of trust and then try to ensure harmony in the society, the constitution is largely going to be a code of conduct for punishment. A large, the constitution is largely going to be a collection of terms and conditions and the various ways of punishment when the crimes are committed. When the crimes are committed. So the natural laws have to be understood and then only the law that we make at the level of society would be properly formulated. Now, finally, liberation. So liberation is to see the existence clearly, to see the reality as it is, to be rid of all types of bondages, which are essentially a result of misunderstandings and confusions. And finally, liberation. So liberation is to see the existence clearly. And that would mean awakening to the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization to see the reality as it is. And that would let us be free of all the kinds of bondages, which are essentially a result of misunderstanding and confusion. So we saw that so long as we are trying to ensure happiness by getting some favorable sensation from the body or by getting some favorable feeling from other, we are in bondage. And we get liberated from these bondages only when we are able to see the truth. We are able to understand the nature as it is. We are able to contemplate on the feelings which are acceptable to us naturally. So living with understanding of natural laws plus wealth plus fulfillment of wishes and that would open the possibility to work for liberation. So this is another way to look at the goals in the society, isn't it? Traditionally, this kind of formulation has been proposed and we proposed another formulation that we had also discussed in UHP2. So both the formulations can be understood, both the formulations can be analyzed, but the essence is that you have to evaluate yourself. Are you able to live up to these laws? Are you able to live up to these goals or not? Okay, the imagination that you have about the future, are they in keeping with these goals or not? This is the most important part. So try to question yourself, try to observe your imagination, try to investigate and evaluate whether our future plans are in keeping with these human goals or not. So now we have some homework for you. So observe that the problem that we see at any level, that is either at the level of individual or family or society, to whatever expanse it may be, or at the level of entire nature, are nothing but absence of fulfillment of some part of the human goal. So be it some political problem, social problem, ecological problem, environmental problem, mental problem, isn't it? Ultimately, they are to do with the lack of fulfillment of some of the other, some, some goal or the other. They are ultimately to do with the lack of fulfillment of some goal or the other, isn't it? If we ensure the fulfillment of these human goals, then does it seem feasible that, then does it seem feasible that we will also get rid of these problems that we are facing today? So try to think over it, try to formulate this. Then what do you see as your goal at the collective level? And is it taking care of all the dimensions of your living? So try to again make this out. And as I mentioned earlier, when you are making a program or plan for your uh, profession, then of course you have to be aware of the human goal so that you are able to choose the right kind of profession where it is not only meant for accumulation of physical facility, but also to fulfill the human goal at every level. So does your profession ensure happiness in the individual? Does it ensure prosperity in every family? Or does it aim at exploiting some of the families? Does it ensure fearlessness in the society? Does it ensure coexistence with the nature? Isn't it? Or does it go in keeping with the second formulation that we talked about? We can make a comparative study of the two formulations of human goal. And are the differences only at the level of expression or there is a difference at the level of essence also? So try to compare these two formulations. <clears throat> it may appear to you that one formulation is just a reformulation of the other. one. It may appear to you that one set of goals is just a reformulation of the other set of goals. 
isn't it so try to compare try to make a comparative study of this and this will help you get more clarity about the human goal so in today's lecture we studied about wisdom and wisdom essentially is identifying the human goal and while identifying the human goal we looked at two different formulations one formulation that we had studied in which we two and another formulation that comes from the tradition and then we try to elaborate upon it understand this so now in the next lecture we'll study about science so thank you so this is all for the lecture today